फ्रेंड्स अभी अभी एक खुशखबरी मिली है हमारी टीम्स के हार्डवर्क से और आप सभी के सहयोग से नई दिल्ली जी ट्वेंटी लीडर्स समिट डिक्लेरेशन पर सहमति बनी है मेरा प्रस्ताव है कि इस लीडर्स डिक्लेरेशन को भी एडप्ट किया जाए मैं इस डेक्लेरेशन को एडप्ट करने की घोषणा करता हूं इस अवसर पर मैं हमारे मंत्रीगण शेरपा और सभी अधिकारियों का हृदय से अभिनंदन करता हूं जिन्होंने अथाक परिश्रम करके इसे सार्थक किया है और इसलिए वे सभी अभिनंदन के अधिकारी हैं मैं अब मीडिया से मित्रों को रिक्वेस्ट कर रहा हूं कि अगर आप इजाजत दें तो हम आगे का काम करना चाहते हैं Well there you have it as we were telling our viewers first here on times now we were telling you now you have the prime minister's official announcement that we just played out for you where he said yes indeed a joint declaration is going to be issued by all the leaders <coughs> let me go across to uh, rishab rishab of course the bit about territorial integrity that was the sticking point but under india's presidency they've managed to overcome that at least people are on board all the nations on board now Well, definitely yes. G20 is uh, has adopted the New Delhi leaders' declaration. A big, big win for India's diplomacy. Remember, when this G20 year began, when India's presidency began, there were news articles, op-eds that how a fractured G20 is being led by India. Now, uh, just uh, yesterday, there was a, a headline in a, one of the international news outlet which said that a disintegrated G20 meets in. Delhi. It's but it is Narendra Modi's time. It is definitely India's time. It is definitely Narendra Modi's moment at G20. Disintegrated, fractured. All these adjectives were used for this grouping. But now we have a joint declaration, New Delhi declaration that has been adopted, mm. which is India's big, big, big victory. Well, absolutely. Let me go across to Madhav. Big victory for India. Another one of the big takeaways, Madhav, making the entire G20 group more inclusive, but also cooperation. As he, as the Prime Minister said, "Sabka Saath" is very significant for the world's future as well. Well, absolutely, and in fact, "Sabka Saath" message are going across to the entire globe, and in fact, at this global platform, in that sense, a very, very important message going out. And uh, India is certainly a country that can play a very important role when it comes to diplomacy. Remember, the world's eyes have been on India at important uh, world events. At, uh, uh, in fact, many would say even unfortunate events such as the Russia-Ukraine war, where several have approached India to play a role of mediator, given the kind of good relations that it has with all the parties concerned. concern and once again that being demonstrated with this particular joint declaration the new delhi declaration that the prime minister has adopted and has been passed now of course the fine print will have to be looked into what are the areas where in fact uh, this uh, consensus has been achieved of course as rishab was telling us there is some amount of wording and technicalities that have also been changed so whether it is really uh, a breakthrough in terms of uh, you know some uh, some kind of strong breakthrough in terms of past positions being revisited by any particular uh, stakeholder all of that needs to be looked into but one thing is very clear that even if you are, you know there are those who will say that these are low hanging fruit that uh, you know uh, uh, new 
Delhi has been able to push through. The point is that last time round, when it came to Bali, the sentiment was very different. There was no joint declaration at that point of time. There was only a chair statement that came out. And this time round, it's quite different in terms of what has been achieved and what really is being achieved right here in the national capital. For New Delhi, for India, it is a big moment indeed. Hosting, first of all, such a big event, which has not happened for a very, very long time, perhaps historic that G20 itself is happening for the very first time in the national capital at this scale. And also the fact that at the end of the day, when we have international meetings, when we have various multilateral fora, the whole idea is to evolve consensus on big issues, on issues such as climate change, for instance, healthcare, for instance. Uh, there are uh, various ways in which different countries can cooperate, can help each other, can understand each other's position and move forward. And that's exactly what these kind of forums are for. So if India has been able to achieve that at whatever level, it is an achievement, no doubt. Certainly there will be those who will doubt, who will say that perhaps uh, uh, this is not what, uh, or this, this is something that was perhaps a foregone conclusion. But nevertheless, for India, it is definitely a very, very important and a very significant moment. And that's something that nobody can take away from. Well, absolutely. In fact, Dr. Ranganathan, if you can weigh in, other than that, the other big development, of course, that we've seen is the inclusion of the African Union. To think that so long you've had an economic grouping without the African Union being part of it, some of the things that India, for example, has been campaigning very hard for and successfully managed to push through in its year of presidency is going to be historic and remembered for a long time. No, absolutely. As I said previously, I think the best decision of this G20 was made in the very first minute. So <laughs> whatever happens for the next one and a half days, it's not going to match it because, you know, we've done what the West always pontificated and, uh, you know, the virtue signaled and said, oh, we are for diversity, inclusivity and, you know, but but we are the ones who actually admitted the African Union permanently. But if I was a bit harsh earlier about uh, not being a diplomat and you know <laughs> talking about issues that are esoteric to me, let 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 me uh, let me also uh, uh, you know kind of uh, diverge a little bit mm -hmm. and talk about the things that I would be very happy if there mm -hmm. would be a consensus. And I'm talking of health out here. You know we've all gone through absolute hell over the past three years. Now, yes, we're not wearing masks anymore. We're not sanitizing our hands, but we all remember the scenes of two years ago, you know, before that. Absolutely. I think the world, this is the forum for, the, for people to come and discuss that in the next seven years, we're going to have a shortage of 10 million healthcare professionals. We are going to have more people killed through antimicrobial resistance mm. than they were killed by COVID. These are the issues that I think a joint declaration must come out and mm. say, next time there is a pandemic, and surely there would be, you mm. know, because pandemics come and go, and it's not just one has gone, and how well prepared are we going to be? Why did it take this world one year one and a half years mm. to allow the rollout of the vaccines. If there is a pandemic next time, are we going to allow millions of people to die before we have vaccines ready for them? The and world something that <coughs> India has also shown the way with Absol vaccine Metri, ab absolutely with Operation yeah. Dose, for yes. example, yes. at the time of... I mean, the Brazilian president, do you remember yes. when he tweeted that uh, famous tweet of Hanumanji getting the vaccines to him? Yes. People were thankful and global... That is why the leadership by India of the global south mm. is absolutely paramount and it's an inflection point. Let's be very honest about it. And shown with example, by leading by example yes. at that. Yes. 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 Uh, you know, talking about outcomes, it's important to list out the outcomes. A total of 73 outcomes have been agreed on. Mm -hmm. 39 annex documents, not including all the working group mm -hmm. things that were done in different parts. In different cities. Yes. Agreed upon 112 outcomes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's almost five times the number or uh, two times the number of outcomes and five times the number of micro agreements mm -hmm. of any previous G20 presidency. Mm -hmm. All right, so we've actually achieved quite a bit. But also, Abhijit, the personal outreach that we have seen of the Prime Minister, yes. it need not instantly translate into something, but it is building the bridge for future collaboration as well. We've talked a lot about what we require to do, especially when it comes to defense, in transfer of technology. So it may not today translate into an inked pack, but tomorrow... It is going to be paving the way forward, wouldn't I you would say? I would disagree. I mm -hmm. think it's immediately translated mm -hmm. into tangibles. 
And I'll tell you why. Hmm. You know the thing when you build a great rapport with somebody mm -hmm. like Modi does. Like, you know, Modi's just, yo, buddy, high five, <laughs> and then uh, jabia papia and all of that. Yes. And <laughs> Congress leaders make fun of him for it. Huh. Do you know how many people, how much India suffered because Jawaharlal Nehru and Indira Gandhi couldn't put their uh, little class su uh, superiority uh, aside when they were dealing with people like Nixon and co. Uh, Nixon or Kennedy. They used to look down on Nixon and Kennedy as not my intellectual equals and India paid a very heavy diplomatic <laughs> The alignment price those, in those days were very right. different. No, but today because Modi mm. does all of this, mm. what happens is yes. uh, these foreign leaders, they feel a sort of personal connect with the man. Mm. And the pain point then of saying no to him becomes that much higher. Hard. So, you know, when the decision ultimately goes to the head of state, and he has to say no because he feels he's struck up this huge rapport with Modi. The His personal ability dinners, to say no comes down connects. and he's like, you know what, it's probably not 100% of what we could have got, but let's just see. Yes. And just Wait. to add to that, 10 seconds, yes. I think what hurts Congress most, I think, Abhijit, is the unbelievable rapport which is surprising to a lot of Indians as well. Yeah. Mm. That rapport Modi has with Islamic countries. Especially with Islam. Especially with us. <laughs> Well, we'll have to wait and see if it helps get the FTA pushed. That's, That's right. one of the things everyone's <coughs> hoping for. We are going to slip into a short break. Lots more on the other side. Don't go anywhere. Not with the Canadians. <laughs>